Yep. You see anybody out here walking around on foot? Off from a ride. It's miserable out here, okay? For sure. You guys got water? Yes, yes sir. sir. Have a great day, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So we are here down in Las Cruces, New Mexico. We're competing in the 2019 Spaceport America Cup, which is where teams from all over the world come together and launch their rockets. Bulldog Rocketry was formed in 2013 as a senior design project. And with those initial four students, we went to a regional rocketry competition. We went there our first time and we won. They were looking for an additional challenge. That's where we came up with going to the International Rocket Engineering Competition. You get to build your own rocket motor and you have to build your own rocket completely. Challenge accepted. We've killed it at every single competition we've gone to, so we decided to step it up to the big ones. The competition we're going against is not, it's not biased in just the U.S. We are reaching, we got people from Brazil, from all walks, from literally the world. So we are competing against teams. They're funded by their governments. They're given these resources that we don't have. I think the reason we're able to compete with them so much is because of how creative we get with our engineering. You know, when you're given such a small budget, you're forced to be creative. You're, you're forced to be innovative and do these engineering things that other people are doing, but in a different way. Okay, get the meeting started, Eric. Come on up here. It's a new semester, it's a new you. Finances. We got news on the finances. Okay, here's the update. We got less money from the space grant program this year, the NASA space grant, uh, but we still did get a good amount. I don't remember if it's like 3,000 or, it's a good amount. Um, we also got 9,000 from the SOG committee. Okay, for that, so approximately, we'll go at 12,000. Uh, the house has upped their price this year. It looks like that's gonna cost us $3,400 for the week plus food, which will cost us $1,200. That's approximately 4,500, which cuts our rocket budget in half of what I had hoped. We got approximately $1,000 in graphite for the nozzles. We got $2,000 in chemicals for the motors. And then we have about $1,000 left to build the rest of the rocket, which isn't enough. With the realization of being short cash to build a rocket, these students are very resourceful. They're a scrappy bunch. No, I mean at the very top. Not... I was the kid growing up who wanted to be an astronaut. I was that kid all the way up through, you know, high school or elementary school, whatever. And growing up in a small town, we really didn't have many engineering opportunities or STEM opportunities. I was actually able to create a first robotics team at my high school because we really didn't have engineering experience there. And so going into college, I was looking around at the different teams and clubs on campus, and I saw the Rocketry Club, and I thought that would be a really good opportunity for me. For me personally, I never thought I was capable of being an engineer. Uh, a lot of situations from my upbringings are probably not even supposed to be here. Growing up in a broken home, it restricts you from getting this far in life and seeing uh, if you have been worthy. There are a lot of students that end up coming to Bulldog Rocketry looking for a challenge and also looking for a group that would accept them. Last I checked, there were 16 countries coming to this competition in Las Cruces, New Mexico. There's countries like Spain, Brazil, Japan, Mexico, Canada, these countries have excellent students and they have great teams. There's an interesting little feature about all that though, is these countries will sponsor their teams. When you have teams like that or teams like from the bigger schools, uh, like UCLA, uh, USC, 
Oregon State. It's tough to compete with that kind of money because it sets up an inertia of people involved, companies involved, keep companies supporting uh, with uh, knowledge and materials. The students have been very resourceful in finding ways to get the materials that we need. So we have a 14 foot long rocket. Um, here are some of the components with the nose cone and the body tube. We have two more components after that with the fiberglass window and our motor tube. It was a little lumpy and we used a $3 can of spray paint to paint it up. Uh, but it functioned just fine. We were able to put our electronics on the inside and everything worked. When you do uh, a project like this, a lot of things can go wrong. A lot of human errors can factor into it. The heat could be a factor, setting up could be a factor, health issues could be a factor, rattlesnakes could be a factor. So launch day, we'll get there at about 4 a.m. in the morning. Gates open at 6, we usually get there a couple hours early because it is, you know, such a race to get there first just because the earlier you get to launch, the better off you are. The heat, you know, during the middle of the day, will it can melt electronics. It can destroy your rocket as it's sitting on the launch pad. We'll have to get a bunch of headlamps and so it'll be completely pitch dark. We put it together in the trailer. Luckily, it'll be about 60 degrees then, about 30 degrees colder than it usually is in the daytime. And we'll take our rocket out, put it in the back of the truck. Send it. Yep. So we're going to the judge stand to get our final check off so we can go down to the range and load up our rocket onto the rail. And then from there, we'll launch our rocket and then recover it. Correct. It's, it's in our trailer. Back, that's 150 pounds. Oh, you okay. You want to... There it is. We get there early, we set everything up, we make sure uh, the judges have looked at everything and deemed it's safe. Where are your rail buttons? On the bottom? They are on yeah, the bottom. correct. There's so there's a rail button right, right. on the there. aft end of the motor, at the very end, and then have one end coupling between the aluminum and the fiberglass here. Yeah. I think I've gotten about four hours of sleep for the last two weeks, making sure everything's right, so it's definitely a little bit of stress involved. But it's good stress because it, it enables you to do more than you would ever be able to do. So you get the two igniters. Correct. Double E match. Okay. Just a, all right. Checklist. Okay. Uh, I guess you are good to go. Awesome. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yep. Oh, here we go, folks. Hop on. I just pray that everything goes as planned because we work all year for 60 seconds, essentially. So we are in the 30,000 foot student research and developed category which means our target altitude is 30,000 feet. And that is literally at the airline level. So they clear out the range, you do it in the middle of nowhere, so you don't have to accidentally hit an airplane or something. All right, foot. Yep. Yeah, so just tap it in. Beautiful. All right, when we take it off the launch road, we gotta be absolutely certain not to hit this again. So green flag is up, which means all the teams can come out here and load their rockets if they're ready. So that's what we have going on right now. We're just doing finishing touches. We're gonna take out um, the stuff we have stuffed in the bottom of the motor, put in the igniter, and then raise the rocket. Then we'll be able to launch here pretty soon. It feels very breathtaking. <laughs> so hopefully all human errors are at the minimum and uh, it would launch so we can finally breathe. Everyone is kind of tense right now. Just hope everything went well. It's either I want to see it explode or I want to see it to work perfectly. Nothing in between because it's cool either way, right? When the 
rockets do launch, it honestly sounds like something you've never heard. It sounds like fighter jet. 20,000 feet. 22,000. 24,000. 26,000. 28,000. on this rocket and on the payload. 30,000 feet. Yeah. Ha ha ha! 31,000. 31. 32,000. 32, 32. She's going! The Apogee deployment charge has fired. Max altitude, 32,829 feet. Max velocity, Mach 1.56. Peak acceleration was 6.3 Gs. Apogee was southeast at a distance of 0.82 miles. I'm not getting anything on this. Oh, that was wonderful. That went just like we wanted. That tower? Work in your ass. Where it, where <laughs> it landed. Our rocket went up perfectly straight, went up to 33, 32,000 feet. Uh, drogue deployed perfectly, went down, main deployed perfectly. It's about a mile and a half away. Looking forward to recovering it. So I pressed the button to launch. It was super fun. Very, um, you know, just very satisfying. <laughs> So right now we're just going to rejoice in, get some coffee, and we'll get a team together for recovery. We do have several students that without uh, any background really available to them in their younger years, they are able to just come as they are and excel. They, they, they truly do excel because we're asking them to bring them, their whole selves, to the team. Their own experiences are plenty. Their own ideas usually are very good. You don't have to have a particular background from young age on up or particular experiences in high school, for instance, or even middle school, to be successful as an engineer or a university student. You just need to look for opportunities to get involved. And Bulldog Rocketry accomplishes that for many of these students that just have never had the chance to participate in anything like this.